Hello everyone, my name is Anthony and in this video we are going to design a USB to I2C converter. Now, one of, the re one of the reasons why I like to design some of these small little breakout boards is because every time you want to communicate with a say another component which uh, you can only interface you can only communicate through a digital digital interface like I2C or SPI, you would have to first program the microcontroller and then send uh, write some software to uh, communicate with that extra comp with that peripheral component and it can be a little bit of uh, um, an overhead uh, if I could ideally control these uh, or or control or communicate with the component directly from my PC uh, that would you know be much more uh, easy and efficient and convenient so these kind of chips are very convenient if you want to debug a component very quickly or communicate with another component which where you can only interface with them through a digital protocol. So that's the reason why we're designing a USB to UART converter because the USB port is uh, accessible in any modern electronic laptop or a computer and an I2C and UART are embedded protocols and this conversion helps you helps your PC communicate with those embedded chips. Uh, what can you communicate what kind of chips would probably you could you might want to communicate with you know it could be a motor control pre-driver or it could be uh, a sensing device where it's a digital sensing device and the only way to communicate is through an embedded protocol or for a matter of fact you want to communicate with your microcontroller or microprocessor directly through this uh, so this does serve a lot of it does serve a multi-purpose uh, application but and hence, we're designing a small little breakout board for the MCP 2221A. All right. So the chip that we're selecting is the microchip. It's uh, it's uh, designed to convert a USB to I2C. And let's get started designing this small little breakout board. Now uh, the data sheet does tell you how to design it, and and you can also one of the reasons why um, or one of the things when it comes to designing components is that the manufacturer themselves will show you different boards that they have designed using this component and you can always take these examples as a reference in order to design your your particular component so i basically based my design in one, based on uh, these uh, reference designs and let's guess and let's see what we have over here so just gonna leave this out here from the beginning. All right. So in this schematic, what we have over here is uh, the I square C MCP two two one A, and in here, this particular component, it has a couple of uh, GPIO pins. So GPIO GP pins are are uh, general purpose input output pins, and a general purpose input output pin serves uh, various purposes. You know. If you want to communicate with a component and you want to set the voltage level high or voltage level low, you want to toggle or you want to drive an LED or you want to drive some form of you know logic, these general purpose pins allow you to communicate or you know uh, allow you to communicate with another component by triggering certain values that they might that the other component might need in order for it to perform its task. So uh, to give a to give a specific example, there's an analog to digital con digital converter that I was designing in one of the other videos, and that particular component, which uh, let me show you over here, is a 24 bit ADC, uh, ADS1234, and this is from Texas Instruments. And in here, you can control the gain, you can control the speed, you can control the A0 and A1 and all. And these parameters help you control the resolution of the ADC converter, it can, can help you control the speed at which you want to sample. And and all and these and these inputs is either a logic level high or a logic level low. And you want to control that. And the general and these general purpose input output pins allows you to control that, that other component by setting the parameters that you want in order to, for it to perform the task that in, in that case is a 24-bit uh, analog to di digital converter. So it also has a UART, which means you can transmit and receive signals. Uh, and it also and it has the uh, SCLSDA, which is the uh, I2C protocol. All right, uh, this is the USB input. Uh, 
you plug this directly into your laptop or your computer. This is a header just for the general purpose input output. So it's got four general purpose input outputs, zero, one, two, three. And this is the output header in the sense that you can connect your uh, serial clock and serial data, transmit and receive up to UART, and, it, and you can also supply 3.3 volts or five volts in this particular case to your external component. So let's have a look at what the PCB looks like. And it's a very small little breakout board and we'll just see it in 3D first to get a glimpse of what we're designing. As you can see, it's a simple 3D board, which has uh, the, the goal over here is to just plug it directly into your laptop or computer using the USB ports available, and then connect the wires based on, and connect, you know, solder a header out here so that you can connect to the components that you want. So you want, uh, the goal was to make it, you know, very easy and accessible and useful. Pretty much, you know, you, you, you solder it and it's uh, and it's good to go. So the main chip over here, which is uh, a quad flat packaging, I think that's what it's called, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. You want the, for example, over here, different packaging and, and you can buy different packaging. So in this particular case, um, you, can, you can make the component much more smaller if you want to save a lot of space. Uh, in this particular case, is you know it's a dip converter, a uh, dip packaging, so you know it's pretty much through hole, or you have to have the dip socket. So this is the kind, this is the the um, packaging which we have selected. It doesn't matter. I didn't want to to go too small. Uh, I just wanted it to be decent size, and this is why I selected it. It's easy to solder. Uh, and what we have over here. So yeah, that's that's really it. Uh, if you want to make this board even smaller, uh, you can select the smaller component or packaging size. I don't think there's much cost difference. It might be a, a small little cost difference. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that's what we have over here. Uh, there might be an issue with the wire over here. All right. Uh, let's have a look. And then this is the ESD protection, which is from the USB you have uh, electrostatic discharge protection circuit or a component then in case if there's some voltage spike it'll try to filter it out and uh, make sure that there's stability in the data or the integrity of the, of the data is maintained uh, then you have some capacitors resistors for pull up these are the pull up resistors over here which is um, connected to these two resistors over here are these two resistors over there yeah, and that's it. It's a very simple design. Let's have a look at the 2D layout. All right. So the 2D layout is also pretty straightforward. We have a couple of polygons uh, to supply 3.3 volts that are that are you know uh, that that are needed for this chip to to function. So I've just basically drawn a polygon to share the 3.3 volts. Uh, the rest of the uh, like transmission and receive is literally you know one single wire uh, directly connected to the output pins or the output header. And then the bottom is a two layer PCB and the bottom is uh, a ground plane. So it's not a high bandwidth, I mean, uh, I2C is not a you know high, high, high speed signal. You're still dealing with the kilobytes per second time uh, time frame um, it's not it's not like a ddr3 or a ddr4 memory layout which you're dealing with you know those are differential signals and the speed is way 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 uh, a lot more so in this particular case we really don't need to you know consider too much of you know signal integrity this uh, principles um, and i generally believe you know these kind of circuits uh, it's literally just connecting the schematic as it is without making sure there's no short circuit and uh, it should work. It's, uh, it's really that straightforward. All right, so once we order the components and part two, we will solder the components and then we'll start testing and see uh, how it works. Uh, and until then, uh, I highly recommend you to subscribe to our channel if you like these videos where we design our own breakout boards so that uh, when we want to create a custom solution then you can't really buy it from say eBay or you can't buy it from uh, Amazon, uh, 
you have your equipped with the tools uh, to create your own customized solution to make your life more convenient, especially when you want to communicate with interfaces or hardware devices um, from your laptop or the way you feel fit. Uh, so that's what this video series is all about, at least in the in the breakout designing of the breakout uh, board sequence. All right, uh, thank you, and uh, until next time. Time.